As a content creator, I get a lot of comments on my channel on all sorts of aspects of military aviation. It's a great way to interact with you guys, gauge your interests and find new ideas for videos. It also allows me to identify some of the misconceptions that sometimes float around the interwebs and I've collected some of these today. I want to talk about a great British icon, the Spitfire. A favorite of many, this aircraft saw service right up until the end of World War II and beyond. It is rightfully remembered as one of the most important planes of that time. Here I want to address some of the confusions that have regularly popped up, place the Spitfire into its historical context and remember it just as it was during World War II. The first misconception that I'd like to talk about has to do with the early engines of the Spitfire. Back when the Spitfires rolled off the production lines, the Merlin engines were carburetors. This engine operated well under normal flight conditions, but would momentarily cease if pushed through negative G maneuvers or when flying inverted. During those maneuvers, fuel would flood the engine, preventing it to operate properly. Now, just that we are clear on what Spitfire has had this problem, we are talking about the Spitfire Mark I, which was the RAF's main Spitfire version during the Battle of Britain, and the Spitfire Mark II. Now, the Spitfire's main rival at the time was the B of 109, which, when it was introduced, had a new system, the injection engine. This engine did not have the same problems to the extent of the Spitfire when it came to negative G or inverted flight maneuvers, and would operate normally at all times unless pushed to the extreme. Now, the Spitfire engine is often criticized for not having the same capabilities as the German injection engine. While this is true, there are a couple of things that need to be added, so to expand the subject and place it into the correct context. First off, carburetors were completely normal at the time. Pretty much every aircraft had them and injection engines were just starting to appear. The 109 was pretty much one of the first single engine military fighter aircraft that had a new design of engine. The early carburetor Spitfire did indeed struggle to follow the BF-109 into some maneuvers, but this was far from being the fatal flaw that some might have suggested. With time, Spitfire pilots adapted and, although it always remained a frustration, fought well. The early Spitfires and BF-109s were equally matched, both holding distinct advantages and disadvantages over each other. Even with a carburetor, a Spitfire had a good chance against a 109. The outcome of a fight was indeed more dependent on the individual pilot and the tactical nature of the engagement. The Merlin engines used by Britain in their Spitfires continued to be carburetors for quite some time during World War II. The introduction of an orifice, also known as a restrictor, allowed for more controlled fuel flow under normal operational use. The Spitfire started to benefit from this device starting from the late 1941 production runs, especially of the Mark V before the pressurized carburetor started to appear two years later. Another misconception I often run into on my channel has to do with the Spitfire's weaponry. As most people know, the majority of Spitfires during World War II were armed with a mixture of 20mm cannons and Browning 303s, or indeed 50 cals. It is this armament that I often see referred to as having been used even during the German invasion of France and the Battle of Britain. Yet this is not so. The early Spitfire had an all Browning 303 armament with 8 rifle caliber machine guns, 4 in each wing. This holds true from the pre-war period, over to the Battle of Britain and just into 1941. Now the first trials with a single Spitfire carrying only two 20mm cannons and no extra MGs commenced in July 1939, but problems with the guns prevented a quick adoption. Let's look at all of this in more detail. As Alfred Price notes, the early service career of the Hispano gun in the Spitfire was a sad tale of frequent stoppages and failures as the cannon tried to shake apart itself and the feed system during firing. The first use of a cannon Spitfire was against a stray German bomber in January 1940, yielding promising results but also reiterating the problem. The starboard gun had stopped firing after a single round, the port gun failed after 30. Nevertheless, just before the Battle of Britain in early July 1940, number 19 squadron received seven Spitfires with a two cannon armament. Now these seven Spitfires were only a fraction of the overall roughly 300 Spitfires that Britain had during the commencement of the Battle of Britain. The problem for these seven Spitfires was that next to these two cannons they had no additional armament. In the words of Air Chief Marshal Downing who wrote on the 24th of July 1940, I am not at all keen on sending it up against German fighters, since it will be extremely badly equipped for the task. 
I say the Cannon Spitfire is badly equipped to meet German fighters because it has only two guns, and even the ME109 has two cannon and two MGs. Furthermore, it has fired off all its ammunition in 5 seconds. Downing also mentions that because the Germans have yet to protect the engines of their aircraft, 8 303 Browning machine guns might still be preferable at this juncture. The squadron leader of number 19 squadron confirmed this standpoint by complaining to RAF High Command that the continuing problems with the cannons and the lack of additional weaponry was seriously impairing even the few missions his squadrons were tasked with. On the 4th of September 1940, the cannon-armed Spitfires were withdrawn and exchanged for conventional 8-gun Spits. It wasn't until November of that year, 1940, well after the Battle of Britain, that the cannon Spitfire would make an operational reappearance. Number 92 Squadron received some new Spitfire Mark 1Bs, boasting the mixed armament of Test Spitfire X4257 with two 20mm cannons and four 303 Brownings. So, to reiterate, by the time of the Battle of Britain, only a handful of Spitfires had cannons, too few to even suggest that it was the norm, with them seeing very, very limited action in the grand scale of things. Going from the Mark I to the Mark II and the Mark V, we start to see an increase in the usage of the mixed armament, but it only became a consistent trend by mid to late 1941. For example, of the 921 Spitfire Mark IIs produced at Castle Bromwich, 751 were armed with the conventional Browning loadout. The rest had a mixed armament and were part of a later production run. Alright, so the last misconception I want to clear up has to do with the use of the Spitfire, again during the early war period. Especially in one of my videos on analyzing bomber damage, I noticed a lot of confusion on the deployment of the Spitfire during 1949 and 1940. The Spitfire was the most modern fighter aircraft the RAF had outclassing the Hurricane in most aspects and being on par with the German B of 109. Yet until very late in the Battle of France, it was kept in reserve. Spitfires were not deployed during the Battle of France, meaning they did not operate from airfields on continental Europe. Instead, Hawker Hurricanes were sent there. The Spitfires were kept in reserve, defending the homeland and patrolling the coastline of Britain where they saw some action. By the time they were used over France, during the evacuation at Dunkirk, the RF had around 300 operational Spitfires. Having kept them in reserve, they were spared, allowing Britain to build up its stockpile of modern fighters. While you can argue that the RAF still did not have enough Spitfires during the Battle of Britain, this early strategic decision did pay off in the long run during the engagements of the English Channel. But on the flip side, this measure also meant that the Allies had no aircraft in sufficient numbers that could effectively counter the 109s during the Battle for France. All of this is important to keep in mind, both to place the proper context on the Battle of France and the later readiness state of the RAF during the initial phase of the Battle of Britain. So, to conclude, Spitfires on the whole were not engaged during the Battle of France and had only a minimal impact on tactical engagements during that phase of World War II. It too only began to substitute the Hawker Hurricane in numbers and sorties after the Battle of Britain, becoming the main RAF asset in 1941. So I hope that you enjoyed this short clarification on the Spitfire, which is such an important and fascinating aircraft during World War II. You can find all relevant sources in the description. If you would like to support my channel in videos such as this one, please check out my Patreon. A small monthly contribution can go a long way, and my tiers have only just been upgraded for more exciting rewards. If you would like to learn why the Soviets didn't like the Spitfire, click right here. And if you want to know more about the Spitfire's involvement at Dunkirk and why the Luftwaffe failed to stop the evacuation, click right here. As always, have a great day, good hunting, and see you in the sky.